ready. You gotta get it and push it out. For Sorrell and Tony King, life in Baltimore was very, very good. Tony was thriving as a stock trader. Sorrell had her hands full raising their four young children. Jack, Ava, Relly, and the youngest, Josie. Josie was the caboose, the little fourth. And um, at least for me, when I remember coming back from the hospital with her, back to coming back home, I was like, okay, now this, now we're done. Here's the family, this is the family, we're done. The stars are all perfect in this little constellation and this is the family. On a cold January evening in 2001, everything changed for the Kings. In a freak accident, 18-month-old Josie wandered away from her parents, crawled into a bathtub, and turned on the hot water, badly burning herself. We took our eyes off of her for a couple minutes and, you know, heard a scream. I immediately called 911. And then they took us to Hopkins. The King's fears gave way to relief when Josie ended up at Johns Hopkins, one of the best hospitals in the world. She was in good hands. After a couple of weeks, Josie had recovered well enough to transfer out of the intensive care unit. She was through the worst of it and just days from being discharged home. But then things began going wrong. Sorrell and Tony began noticing obvious signs that Josie was suffering from severe dehydration, a common threat to burn survivors. She just looked really thin. Her coloring was off. Her eyes were kind of, it's like she was passing out or something. So I called a nurse over. I said, it's something doesn't look right. Can you take a look at her? Let's call a doctor. Let's call a doctor. She looked at her and said, no, her vitals are fine. She's fine. And I said, can someone else has got to look at her? Josie desperately needed to be treated for dehydration. But nobody listened to Sorrell and Tony's concerns. And Hopkins failed to act until it was too late. You know, I looked at her, and her eyes had rolled back in her head. And, um, you know, I said, Josie, get Josie. And then I just kind of screamed for help. Um, screamed for help. And then the next thing I knew, this whole team of, um, whole team of people, doctors and nurses, and with these big tables and these metal tables, and all these people came running in, and they just made me leave. And I just sort of standing there. And then they put me in a room with a chaplain. And I knew, I knew, I knew it was, I knew it was gonna be good. On February 22nd, 2001, Josie King died at Johns Hopkins Hospital, the result of severe dehydration missed by her caregivers and the possible misuse of narcotics. Preventable medical errors. The King family had fallen prey to a silent killer, the epidemic of medical errors plaguing hospitals all across America. Medical errors? They're not going to make a mistake. These people are the smartest of the smartest. They'd never really even, we had, I mean, they had never really even heard the term medical error, they even, you know, knew that that was, that th this was going on. In fact, a year before Josie's death, the Institute of Medicine shocked the nation with news that medical errors were a widespread and devastating problem, killing more Americans every year than auto accidents, breast cancer, or AIDS. What we need is outrage. We, we need outrage. We need, we need the public to say, no, I, I don't want a healthcare system at any price, let alone close to $2 trillion, which is going to hurt me when it tries to help me.